Hello, hello, hello. My name is Chris Reese. Joining me here in a second is Pastor Don Lang. I'd like to welcome you to Where Faith Meets Life. The month of October is kind of exciting because it is the 20th anniversary of CCC, CCCFC. I'm going to get all the C's and the F's in there. <laughs> CCCFC. And we are celebrating it this month. We're going to end this month with a, a special worship service, specifically in celebration of the 20th anniversary. To kick off the festivities, we are dedicating the entire month of October in the Where Faith Meets Life to talking about different aspects of the last 20 years. We're going to have different people come in um, and tell us more about how the church has had an impact on them and talk a bit about the church history. Mm. Tonight, we're going to focus in on some of the key aspects of the last 20 years and kind of look at the church from the very beginning. Before we get started, let me open us up in a word of prayer. Lord, just thank you for your church. Thank you for the people who started 20 years ago with the foresight to, to move to North Plano and to start this church. Thank you for all the, the people that you've touched through this church. Thank you for the opportunities that people have had to serve you and the opportunity to learn more about you. We thank you for everything you're doing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As promised, joining me tonight is Pastor Don Lang. How are you doing today, Don? I'm doing good. There's a... Uh... Well, I've heard many say, hey, doing better than I deserve, and yeah. that's the truth. I've got, a, I've got a, a friend, that's what he says, you ask him how he's doing, and his response is always, better than I deserve, better than I deserve. So we're going to start off with just talking a little bit about the church. 20 years, that's, that's a, an amazing number. Amen. And you, know, you start to look at a lot of the people around, um, they were not even around in 20 years ago, or very young. So... From your perspective, what was the mission that started it all? What was really the, the, the trigger mm. for the beginning of this church? You know, it, it's, uh, it, it happened long before I was ever here. But as I've had the privilege of hearing stories from uh, various uh, church leaders who were a part of that movement. And what, what happened was at Dallas Chinese Fellowship Church, there was a group of believers there that really felt a burden. That, that God was calling them to, to do a new work in, in, in North Plano. Now, at that time, this area was a lot of field still. It was uh, not as developed, anywhere near as developed as what we see now. And uh, you'd have to go north of Prosper to get a feel for what it was actually like at this time. The roads out here were much smaller, uh, not, not like you see here as, as developed. But what was incredible is just a, a sense of divine leading. And, uh, you know, as, as even the, the plot of land that we're on right here, you know, the, 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 it's, it's a funny story because we have uh, one, of our, one of our deacons, uh, Deacon Ming, uh, Ming Jian, Ming, Ming Jia Ming. So he, yeah, uh, he ended up um, checking out, uh, driving on the road. He, he was going up north to look at uh, places. His car actually broke down, if I understand correctly, uh, over here. And uh, this is how he actually kind of discovered this, this spot. And uh, God, God made a way for actually the land that we're on to, to be made available to us. Now, uh, again, though, what was the, uh, the drive was just a, a sense that, the, that, that God was leading them to reach uh, more, more Chinese that were uh, in, in the north, you know, Plano area because there was a movement of going up north. And so that was kind of where it started. Actually, it was in July around 2000, I believe it was, there was a, a group of gatherings, it was like a, one of the cell groups that started uh, uh, meeting in a home. And, uh, and, and then in August, you know, there was, there was a, a second group. Uh, so they, were, can, they started as a cell group. So cell groups became really the foundational DNA of, of what the, the church was. You know, it, it wasn't like planting a church and then, you know, we're going to get out and reach people. They were reaching people, starting their homes, and as this grew, as relationships touched upon uh, lives of, of, of those around them, co-workers, class, uh, classmates, uh, you, know, uh, you know, various neighborhood you know, connections. And they were phenomenal at just networking relationally and loving and caring and serving. And that's where really the foundation of this church was out of the cell groups. And then from there, they started in October, which is the month we're in of 2002, uh, 20 years ago, they started meeting at Betty Hahn Elementary School, and they began their Sunday worship. So that's why they looked to the October, because that was the first actual worship service for us as a church. 
and well, for them, and by, by proxy, I'm, I'm now part of the church. So for us, um, looking back, and so that, that's, that was the, 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 the kind of the affirmation, and they, they continued to move and grow, and, uh, and they, they ended up outgrowing spaces. They ended up in 2001 uh, going to Jasper High School, and then 2005, uh, they ended up moving to the, the, the new home that is here and, and, and actually with the, the actual church building. So within five years, they had uh, begun, uh, they had actually, you know, moved into uh, this, you know, well, at least the main, the first part of the facility. And uh, that's kind of, you know, as far as it, it, just a general uh, guideline. And I, I think that uh, the exciting thing is just that to, to see how um, it wasn't just, you know, the, the, the first generation, it's obviously they're going to have kids. And as they had more kids, they were you know, wanting to pour into these kids and, and see them grow up in the Lord and, uh, and, and discover faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and they wanted to provide ministries to them with Sunday school and fellowship. Mm-hmm. And so they, they continued to expand that. And so really, as they saw this iteration, because in Chinese churches, there is a, there's a thing, they grow up. And they grow out of the church. And so the desire was, man, we don't want to lose any more of our second generation. And so they were praying, you know, already, uh, you know, well, probably around 2008, eight, nine, uh, about, you know, that, that what does the next stage ministry look like? I remember they had conversations with me in 2010 and then again in 2012. And for me, the, 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 the defining moment was actually... When I met with the senior pastor, and he, and he cast the vision for reaching the second generation, um, just to hear his passion um, and to hear the clarity of, 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 of what needed to happen, even though there wasn't, you know, I mean, honestly, you look back, there was a, a glimpse into the future. But what I, what I saw was a conviction that, uh, that you know, that, this, that they, as a, as a church, were willing to adjust and adapt and, and, and figure out how this looks. And, Actually, the fact that we're in a chapel right now uh, that was intended for overflow for the Chinese service, and they're, they're, they're you know, basically you know, allowing this to be the place where the, the English congregation you know, is growing and thriving. So there's, there's been a lot of transitions, but they, they were praying for God, you know, what he was going to do for the next generation. And in 2013 is when we accepted the call to come. We launched an English worship. English was... It was English, but it wasn't necessarily adult worship. It was more of a youth worship. Uh, and it was kind of already having a youth worship, but we just kind of began to, to kind of like make it a, 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 a multiple, uh, multiple age from youth all the way to when the Lord takes you home. Um, but those years were really early on. Matter of fact, I think, you know, in, in the website, uh, later Chris is going to be able to show some images. And I think those images just give you a glimpse of who God has been bringing in. And I've got to say, it just touches me. How God's story, you never, you never know what God is going to do, except you know that he's going to work for good. If we continue to trust him and serve him and, 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 and love one another, right? So that's our, our, our vision, right? Loving one another to bless the nations. Because one thing that we know everybody longs for is to find a place where they belong, where they can be loved, where they can be heard, where they can grow, and they can make impact. And the exciting thing is this is a church, both on the Chinese and English side, where I've seen that, that, that desire to, to empower and, and, and allow that to, to, to happen. And so, you know, that's uh, kind of a... Uh, no, that's a good start. That's a good picture. start. And I, I, I've lived in my house, which is not that far from, from here, um, for the last, I just was thinking about it while you were speaking, 26 years. I didn't realize it was quite that much. And so, yeah, I can vouch for there not being anything out here. Um, I'm trying to remember when they actually completed uh, McDermott all the way to Preston. It used to just kind of <laughs> die around here. And, uh, um, yeah, it's been uh, – Preston Meadows was, uh, um, I think, a little one-lane, you know, road. And, and it's – yeah, it's, it's grown immensely. It's grown immensely in the last uh, 20-something years. Mm. Uh, but you're absolutely right. It was a, a wheat field right next to my house back in those days. Wow. So you've already started to touch on the next thing I wanted to ask you about, which was – what are some of those those key transition points? So you said uh, 2000, October of 2000 is really the, the birth of the church. You're meeting mm-hmm. in schools at the time. Right. Uh, in 2005 is when had the first building, physical location for That's the church. That's right. Um, and, then, um, and then when was the, the youth sanctuary built? Was that part of the original build? Oh, wow. That was not a part of the original build. So... 
have to, to, to look at the, the details on that, but our, uh, I, I do recall, uh, actually, Pastor Roberto. So Pastor Roberto is our youth pastor, mm-hmm. and uh, um, actually, I was serving in another church in the North Dallas area uh, as an English pastor, but that, that meant I oversee youth and, and, and adults. But, uh, you know, there was a connection, Pastor uh, Gilbert down at Dallas Chinese Fellowship Church, who's a youth pastor, and I, we went to seminary together, so we were really close, and this church, you know, was a plant of the university. So when they brought in a, a, a youth pastor, you know, uh, Pastor Gilbert and Pastor Roberto got connected. And, and I always have coffee with, we say, the boys. So you are and, and, and Gilbert and, uh, and myself. And so uh, Pastor Roberto was a part of that group. So I kind of knew Pastor Roberto outside of the church and then had chances to, to come and, and, and speak at their youth retreats at times. Um, but uh, just it was exciting to see how God used Pastor Roberto in this, in, in this environment to really draw the youth together. Um, he really used the gift of music. I've got to say, um, his heart mm-hmm. and uh, his shepherding heart to care. He's, he's just easy, you know, he's a non-threatening kind of person. You, you know, when you know Pastor Roberto, it, he's just someone that, you know, is, is just always calm. Yeah. You know, he's not going to startle some youth, you know, that's new coming. It, it, they're going to feel comfortable. They're going to feel safe. And and not only that, his, his winsome way uh, is just, there's been a, just a testament, a legacy of lives that have been impacted. In fact, when we came in 2013, a lot of those that were coming back, they would come to the church, not because they knew there was anything on the English side. They were coming back to see Pastor Roberto. Why? Because he, 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 he cared for them. And, and uh, you know, whether disciple them or teaching them, you know, through Sunday school are teaching them how to play, you know, guitar and worship. Um, you know, the, these these people came back. And actually, Inez, one of the uh, people that was here when I first came, one of the few uh, adults, you know, she was actually more like in college at the, at the end of that. Um, you know, she, she had also been touched by Pastor Roberto. So, I, you know, honestly, Pastor Roberto and the relationship I had, and, 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 and really he's a man of God. And I... I, 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 I I really felt uh, an affinity with him. And so with that and Pastor Katong's vision casting, that kind of, you know, okay, let's let's check this out, God. Is this what you want? And uh, so we started checking it out in 2012. Uh, but uh, I digress. What was the question now? I just totally... <laughs> no, no, that was good. I was asking about some... We were talking about some of the key transition points. That actually okay. was, was a good, a good lead-in. And that kind of leads us into something a little bit probably closer to, to us on this live stream is... When was the English ministry launched? Hmm. So there, there was 2013, depending on if you ask. That's when they, they hired me as an English pastor. But there's one thing to have a title of a ministry and actually have a ministry, right? And so what I, what I, I saw those first couple of years was a lot of relationship building. So, you know, meeting with people for coffee, you know, and a lot of it was you know, whether with the Twans, I remember meeting Andrew and Daniel, we were at, well, at a fast food, you know, restaurant, and just, you know, getting to know each other. And, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I'm a white guy. So, you know, I'm used to that experience when you go into a Chinese church that, you know, it's like, there is a little bit of, you know, like, okay, is, is you know, who is this? And, and honestly, a lot of questions, people wonder, are you going to stay? Right? So that, that, that you know, there's, there's some of that, and so it just takes time. And so over a period of years, God allowed relationships to flourish, and ministry began to grow. And that is where we had, you know, Bible studies, where we had a discipleship groups Sunday morning. We'd, we'd, before church even started, we had our, our early morning men's group, you know, for the, for the, for the guys. And, you know, we'd get together and, and study and, and, and just hold each other accountable and those were relationship building. Those were the foundation blocks. Apart from that, it's really hard for ministry to have a place to, to, to grow from. And so those relationships from 2013 to about 15, there was a lot of stuff that we were just, you know, yeah, we we're doing ministry, but, you know, as far as, you know, where, where are we really going with this? You know, there's a lot of different things I've tried, but, you know, it, it's, it's one thing to come in and actually do a ministry and just say, hey, this is how we're going to do it versus, you know, more organically saying, okay, God, so what are you doing? You know, what, how do you want to use me? And, 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 and being willing to, and this is for me really uncomfortable because I like to be in control. Um, and I remember there, there was a period, I remember it was uh, with her sister Inez, you know, and, and 
and, and she had joined in and part of the team, you know, when, when we were developing coworkers, uh, at least, the, you know, the idea of coworkers. And, and, you know, one time, you know, we were having a meeting and I liked it, like, hey, let's talk about it, let's discuss this in real time, let's plan. And, and for her, I remember it was like, it was like, okay, she, there was just too much information at once. I remember she's, you know, can, can, I, can I have some time to think about this and then come back to you, you know, to have feedback. And she said, because it, it, otherwise it's just not going to work. And so for me, also learning to relate with people with different personality types and different approaches, um, that, you know, I began to change. God began to really change me in those, those years from 2014 and 15. I, I, you know, I sensed God was telling me, you know, that I need to learn to, to grow. I need to learn to listen. I need to be able to adapt uh, and, and, and serve the various kinds of people God is bringing here. And so there were some changes that I began to implement in my own leadership uh, as far as a pastor and cultivating uh, the, the, the congregation. I would say that the really uh, the, the iteration of where we are uh, as far as like, you know, God used every step and every, every lesson along the way, you know, working with college students and young adults. But I would say it was really 2018 where, where we began to clarify our vision and our values, our mission. And we actually, uh, uh, you know, kind of consolidated all our Sunday school into one uh, group. And we focused on that summer. We focused on our, our values. And uh, before ever launching, like, the, the English, you know, separate worship from the youth. And so we focused on values. And those that were really responding to what we were talking about, those that were, were engaged and those were, you know, excited and wanted to be a part of this, you know, we invited, hey, listen, we can take a group of you, took 10 of them, and then we were going to bring them in waves, which we did. We, we started with the first wave of 10 coworkers that we trained up, you know, from that late summer of 2018. And uh, with the anticipation that they would be the first wave of coworkers when we opened our worship service and we prioritized actually training and equipping people to be good at welcoming others. And really that tied in with something that this church was already doing. These young adults without even being trained, and I think maybe because they were, they were trained in part with, you know, being in part of the church, but also with RC or Camps Crusade, the importance of reaching out to the lost, loving the lost, listening to people, caring for people and that that I think has blessed us immensely you know I've seen in this church what was huge about this and looking back is that that God created a space where people that maybe had become really distant from the church were willing to come back and and felt it was a safe place to 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 you know put their their toe in the water and and and, and begin to check out church again and 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 what could this mean for them and uh, our, our, our young adults are just so, you know, outward oriented. Um, even though they may not be extroverts, you don't have to be an extrovert. They're introverts who are just so warm and, and welcoming um, in, in their introverted ways, but powerful. And so that was something that God used uh, over, the, over, over a period of years to begin to draw together a critical mass. In that 2018, we trained and equipped and then we launched, uh, you know, basically the, the uh, beginning of the year 2019, I guess it was. Yeah, 2019. So uh, where we actually launched our official worship service. And, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been running and gunning since then. It's just been so much uh, change. God has brought so many people into our midst. You know, sometimes people when ask me, well, what are you guys doing? I was like, well, you know, we're praying and we're, 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 we're reaching out, um, you know, but honestly, you know, as Paul said, it, it, you know, you know, this one, one waters, you know, you know, another one plants, another one waters, but it's God who brings the increase. And, and honestly, I think we just have to remember that in all these things, that apart from God, nothing happens. We can work ourselves to the bone, yeah. but if it's not for the Lord working, we, work, we labor in vain. And so we just have to continue to remind ourselves that apart from him, none of this is possible. But yet... We stand on the shoulders of others because of these faithful men and women that left a comfortable church, a growing, thriving church in, in South Plano, North Dallas, and they came up here. And they were willing to invest and to sacrifice for the, the Lord's will, for the Lord's cause, for the mission. And, and God has blessed that. And God has grown us into a, a large church, but it's not just about how many numbers. They, now they, they sent some of their best 
to Frisco. And now they continue yeah. to plant. And, 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 and I'm just praying that God will do the same for the English side. That God would place in our hearts a desire not to be comfortable, but to be committed. Not to look for convenience, but look for ways that we can serve, grow, and, and, and share. And so COVID has been a, a little bit of a hampering on that. But, you know, I trust that God has in, 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 in our best in mind. And so we have to learn how to adapt. Even so, God is doing I mean, what we're doing now. We never would have done this. No. Never no. would have done this a year ago, right? I, you asked me, are we going to be doing this? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. We got plenty of other things to do. But here's the thing is that God has called us, you know, no matter what church you're in, you know, Matthew 28 is so clear, you know, as you're going, you know, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, right, and teaching them all that, 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 that he has, all, all that he's provided, you know, as we have God's word. And so for us, the mission statement for that comes in, and we'll unpack that in more detail in another week. But he's called us to reproduce disciples. And so in 2018, we really doubled down on what it would look like to develop and to disciple and equip. And that's what it really is, equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. It's not a pastor doing the work. It's the body. Mm -hmm. It's every individual who is gifted. And God intends those gifts to be unwrapped, my friends. Your gift. You are gifted. If you have the Spirit of God in you, and you're like, well, do I have the Spirit of God? Have you placed your trust in Jesus Christ? If you have, man, you are so anointed. You are so not only blessed, but he blessed you to be a blessing to the body of Christ and to the world beyond. And so our, my call to you is not just to celebrate what God has done in the past, but let that to be a reminder that God is faithful. God will take what you give him, and he will grow it. Because it is glorifying the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. When you use your life to love others, to serve others. And so I want to invite you, if you've never gone through that process, join in a church. Check us out. And for those who are co-workers, and you're like, well, we can't do anything, COVID. No, we can. Don't wait for COVID to, to be in the, in, in, in the past, in the rear mirror, before you move forward in your spiritual life. Don't wait. That's the evil one telling you that. That's fear telling you that. You know, yeah, you don't have to go out in the middle of a crowd and, 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 and be without a mask and stuff like that. We're not talking about that. But learning how, with wisdom, to engage with your gifts, with your life. And so for, for me, that, that equipping was really crucial. And I've seen God bless that. Now, we've had to learn and we've had to change and adapt our equipping. We try to accomplish too much and, you know, we're, Equipping was a one-year process. You know, honestly, we, we're trying to streamline that now. We're, you know, four to six weeks to get people on board and getting people involved in, in community, getting people involved and serving. And uh, so we're, we're learning and continue to grow. Uh, but I'm convinced that God is, can, is still at work and that God has great things in, in store for you. Mm -hmm. um, my friends, um, believe me, God has a great work for you to do. And don't let it go undone. Don't let a present that God has given you stay under that tree. You think about Christmas and, and remain unwrapped. We're celebrating 20 years of God's faithfulness of people unwrapping their lives to the glory of God. That's what the celebration is. For God's glory, people who have taken their lives and unwrapped it and blessed those around them through, through prayer, through serving, bringing food, through uh, just caring for people, getting to know people. But along the way, along the way, sharing the life-saving, life-changing good news, that gospel of Jesus Christ, that, that God has loved you with an everlasting love and that he desires to redeem your life from the pit and, and give you a joy that is untaintable by this world, to give you a peace that is un, un, untouchable by this world. Because he can guard us and he will glorify himself as we do that. Rejoicing in his goodness, friends. That's what God calls us to do. To enjoy him. Not just in heaven, but today. And my friends, so I invite you guys as we celebrate this month, 2020. Make no mistake. Yes, we celebrate 20 years of God's faithfulness. But what about the next 20? How is God going to use you? And what I think is great 
and I had a chance to look at this earlier today, is I'm going to go to, not that one, <laughs> that one. We'll get to that one. Uh -huh. Ignore that one. Uh, the website. Yeah. And, look at that. Um, look at that. And so, Isn't that great? On Mission Unstoppable, you will see a... Oh, yeah, Pastor Katong's uh, uh, introductory letter there. Yeah. And if you scroll all the way down at the bottom, you can see where it says English Ministry here. Mm -hmm. And that brings us up to a PDF that will download. Uh. And this is great. I had a chance to, to not read all of it today, but I've read some chunks of it. And it is a fascinating read to see some key elements of how the church has had an impact on some of the people that are Look here. at those faces. Look at those people. You know, that was actually, you, know, you see that cabin up there? So that cabin was, uh, in, in, uh, you'll see that I think it was in January of, of uh, uh, 2014. And so that was like literally still not even, you know, just really one year that we've been here. And so if you look at that, a lot of those, you know, the college students are actually, you know, they're, they're graduated. You know, I, I see I see Jesse Chang in there. Well, not, uh, oh, wait, wait, last name, last name. Oh, I forgot her new last name. Oh, my goodness. So she's married now, living down in, in, in Houston. Oh, and there's Yvonne and Samantha and, and Inez. So you see those ladies in the front row. And then, oh, there's Jeannie on the right. She's, you know, one of our English deacons now. You know, ask her then, oh, do you think you'd be an English deacon? That would have been like, ah, I bet you'd get an answer. Like, no, <laughs> ain't happening. But then, you know, you've got the guys in the back. I think there's Edward Cow and Samuel. Uh, oh, wow. Let's, and let's, see. Oh, let's see. Who else is there? So Vincent, Vincent James. James. So a lot of our guys, you know, are, 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 are early on were a part of us. And it's amazing. Even though, like, I remember, like, uh, Samantha ended up uh, actually accepting a call to go and do, like, I guess, like an internship of whatnot and, and worship in, in a large, you know, uh, uh, you know American church. And, and uh, God graciously brought her back. And, uh, you know, it's exciting how God is working in your life. And, uh, yeah, there's so much more things that are, that are going on. And, and so I just, I, I, I rejoice. I look at this. And, you know, that trip, that was our first college retreat. And you see the adults on the right hand side, they made it possible. They cooked along the way. They gave up their time and, and they, they, they served and they goofed off. We, we, we did hiking. It got cold. Matter of fact, we had to cut off that retreat early by like an hour and a half to two hours because they were shutting down the roads uh, leading up to, uh, to uh, th that cabin because a massive ice storm was just plowing down. And that was in Arkansas. And so we, 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 had, to, we had to throw everything in the vans and we're heading out of there. And I kid you not, you know, at some points, the ice storm had already been catching up to us. And you could hear, you know, it was just, it was, it was exciting. It was thrilling, actually. We had a wonderful time. I will, I'll never forget, that was the first one of our retreats. And I saw how God works. When you get away from the home, you know, our, our, our regular daily life, and you get away and you spend time with God's people and God's word. And, and so I'm promoting for our future retreats, my friend. It is so worthwhile. It's amazing what God does when, when we get away and, and intentionally carve out time to be with him and his people, his word, and it's so restoring. Um, so I hope that the next time when we have a retreat that you'll pray about joining us. I think it'll be a, a, a lot of fun to be had, but also I think it's a way that God ministers and raises us up, prepares us to, to be uh, led, led into maybe deeper areas of experiencing him and, and faithfulness unto him. Well, probably the next thing we should go ahead and talk about, Don, is since I've already spoiled the surprise, oh. <laughs> the, uh, the swag. Oh, yes. All right. So these are, our, this is really great. So if you look on the one on the right, that is actually our, our church logo now. Woohoo! So we actually have a church logo. It's on the right-hand side of, of, of the cup there. And you'll see on the left-hand side, it, it is a... Uh, it's our 20th anniversary. So this mug has been given out to, you know, one mug per family. And, uh, and so basically it's, it's just our way of saying, hey, we celebrate God's goodness. And it's a commemorative mug. You know, I don't know. Some people may put it in a cabinet. I always use mugs are used, right? You know, it's not for posterity. It's for pouring coffee in and drinking it. But we also have yo-yos that light up, I think, for, for the younger kids. Uh, we've got pins, uh, balloons. So, you know, in your cell groups, in your home groups, 
if you haven't received yours yet, talk to your home group leader, your sub group leader, because we're going to be getting them out this week, and uh, we sure hope that you got yours. Uh, if not, let me know. We'll make sure you get one, okay? No, but it's awesome. It's awesome. And with that, I think that that's a, a good start to the celebration month. Mm. Would you like to, to close us in a word of prayer, Pastor Don? Well, I was actually hoping, I was going to ask if you would close us in prayer, Chris. I would happily close us in prayer. Cool. Lord, I want to thank you for this church. Uh, it has meant a lot to me in the short time that I've been a part of it. I want to thank you for my friendship with Pastor Don. That's been a lot longer of a friendship. But it's through connections like that, similar to as, as Don was saying with Pastor Roberto, and it's, it's the people that make this church yes, what it is. Yeah, and I want to thank you for everybody who has made me feel welcome, mm. everybody who has reached out to me. It has not been a church that you sneak in, sit in the back, and then sneak out. <laughs> Praise God. It is a church where people honestly care about you, honestly seek to, to see how you're doing mm -hmm. and to, to really be a part of your life. I want to thank you for really the last 20 years. And it's been a blessing to me to see the history and to read about this legacy that's being built. Mm -hmm. I look forward to learning more about the church over the course of this month. And I look forward to being part of the celebration at the end of the month. Lord, we thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys have a great week, and we'll talk to you, one, on Sunday, but two, next Wednesday. Take Absolutely. care. Absolutely. You guys, bye.